treatise on FTV, which is not part of this new clause, and I hope you might bring it to an end. The points that are currently being made are relevant to this debate. Mr Galloway. Yes, it is. I'm supporting Amendment uh, B. The Honourable Gentleman, who has made at least six interventions, each more bovine than the last, <laughs> ought to have read the order paper more closely. Yeah, 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 yeah. The single transferable vote system may or may not be beyond the voters in Edinburgh, but my experience of Edinburgh is that nothing is beyond them. Yeah. But it's certainly not beyond the voters of the Republic of Ireland, who have developed that system into a fine art, a f as fine an art of political sophistication as is available anywhere in the Western world. And it's not beyond our people to grasp its complexities, and neither is it the case that one of the three members for South Dublin is, in, is not regarded by the voters of South Dublin as their MP, or that the MP for South Dublin does not regard himself as the MP for South Dublin because there are two others. This is absurd, the idea that this ossified system of ours of one member, one constituency, of a given size, is foolish uh, in the extreme. Yeah. If we would go to the system uh, that they have in the Republic of Ireland, as we can do if we support uh, Amendment B this evening, yes, things would change. But then, Madam Chairman, if things do not change, there is no hope for politics in this country. Well, the gentleman says from a sedentary position uh, for me. I've won five general elections, and the first of them was against the great Roy Jenkins, who has been prayed in aid by the member for Sparkbrook uh, this evening. He was the first pillar of the establishment I defeated. He was not the last, and there may be more to come. Don't bet the farm uh, on that. But Roy Jenkins, Roy Jenkins suggested to this government more than 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, he proposed to the government that they could have grasped this nettle, and they refused to do for, so for the same cynical reasons that they are now grasping for it. If they'd listened to Roy Jenkins, if they'd implemented the Jenkins Commission, the centre-left majority which exists in this country would be entrenched in power. And the right-wing rump represented by these people here, who opposed votes for women, who opposed votes for working men. Yeah, well, they can laugh, but people know, people know that the words democracy and the Conservative Party do not easily fit together. This right-wing, this right-wing rump. George Galloway. This, this right-wing rump which for a variety of reasons for which I have no time to develop, stand on the brink of power, would never have been in power again if Jenkins had been listened to and electoral reform implemented and the true centre-left majority, do the maths, look at any opinion poll and do the maths, add the Labour and the Liberal and the Scottish Nationalist and the Welsh Nationalist and the Respect and others, add them together there's a very clear centre-left majority in this country. And what would be wrong with an electoral system that actually gave the House of Commons the actual levels of representation that the people had voted for? My last words on this are, are yes, they don't like it up em. They don't like it up em, Madam Chairman. That's for sure. Well, some of them do. The, my last words are, are, are this. <laughs> Proportional representation is about giving people what they vote for. I've heard all sorts of asinine comments tonight about small parties as being the, uh, the, the, field, the, the prerogative for idiots. It was twice said that the people who vote for the third party or the fourth party are idiots. Well, that's a good way to increase their uh, popularity, I must uh, tell you. But they have as much right to choose 
how this House of Commons looks like as any of those supporting what we now increasingly less often can call the major uh, parties. Proportional representation is about giving people a House of Commons that reflects how they voted. And what's wrong with a system that gives you 10% of the seats in a parliament if you got 10% of the votes or 30% or 50%? What's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with it, Madam Deputy Speaker, because it would put the ironclad consensus which normally exists across this chamber out of business. Yeah. That would be a good thing too. Yeah.